have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Wow. All right. Welcome back, everybody. It's been a day or two for me, but not for you. So here I have some high vacuum grease, and we're going to be able to uh, seal these guys up. I already did this one to make sure it's going to work okay. Just out of the frame almost. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one. I'm going to apply a little bit of this vacuum grease in between here, and you'll see how this works. So when they ship these, they put a little piece of paper in here so that uh, these don't get jammed in there and smash them. So I'm going to wipe this off. Make sure there's no contaminants on here. Same thing with this, the best I can. It's pretty good. Now, right now you can see this is actually frosted, but here in a second you'll actually be able to see it's clear. So I'm going to apply a very little bit of this, very little bit on this side. These are precision ground, so no need for, for a bunch of excess. So that should be enough. Alright, let's, let's give it a shot. I may need to add a little more, but we're going to try it. So push it in slowly. You can see how it cleared up. Now we're going to turn it. Try to work out all that air. And uh, hopefully that's good enough. So as you can totally see now, you can see the path of which way those pipes connect. So with this down, this pipe connects to the outlet. And with this up, this pipe connects to the inlet. So one's vac and one's your incoming gas. That's it. That's how this stuff seals. The exact same thing happens for these fittings. You put a little bit of this vacuum grease on here. So once we get all these in place, we'll actually uh, we'll actually test them, make sure they're sealed well. But pretty cool. Well, learn something new every day. So this right here, I think I figured something out. There wasn't really any instructions with this, and uh, kind of learning as I go. There's a little port right here that goes into this little chamber and inside this because this is sealed on the inside but it's open on the inside what that is is if you if you put that up into the back line which you just saw it sort of spit up that was sort of some of the grease that's on the vacuum side so now I'm going to turn the vacuum pump on I'm going to pull a vacuum on the back side here and that will actually hold this valve in place and keep it a tight seal here it is from a different angle in case the uh amount of light from that other angle wasn't quite enough. It's pretty cool that that makes such a good seal that you can pull a really high vacuum on that. So briefly, let's show you guys exactly what kind of things can go on this system. So this is a two neck round bottom flask. This is a three neck round bottom flask. This, and these are usually for reactions by the way, this is a single neck round bottom flask with a vacuum inlet uh, to PTFE vacuum valve. 
This is a different style reaction flask. It's a cylinder type with also a vacuum fitting on it. This here is actually a dis distillation tube. So you've got water running in a jacket and then you've got your main plumbing going through the middle. It's hard to see but there is actually an extra pipe there. Then you got a couple of uh, PTFE <coughs> valve fittings and some adapters. These are uh, caps. That is an adapter for the small size to the big size. In my case a 1420 by a 2440. There's one for uh, a pipe outlet and this is actually an adapter for a thermocouple or thermometer. So this is just some of the generic pieces you can find. Now some people are going to say how do these things stay in place? They make these little clips. These happen to be metal ones. These happen to be plastic ones. And I'll put one of these together so you can see how these work. But this actually holds everything from just falling apart. So, yeah. Those are the, you know, some of the basic components. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds more. But this is what I have. There's also more. But this is the basics that I have. Well, let's try to put one of these on, shall we? Alright, so let's talk about these clips. So this is a small plastic clip and it actually holds these components together when you get them assembled. So I'm not going to put grease on this, I'm just going to demonstrate so you can see. Pop this guy on here. Very gently pop that guy on there. And now this holds this in place, so that way you don't have to worry about them falling apart. If there's a pressure or something like that, even if it gives, at least it won't completely fall down and bust. So anyway, that's how that works. Pretty simple. As I'm assembling something just to kind of show you guys what this will look like when it's all together, I want to show you this little component. So this is actually what they call a septa. Alright, so this happens to fit this particular size. So this goes in here like this. And then this gets folded on top of itself. Like that. Okay, so now, oh, that didn't go on well, did it? So now, if we wanted to take a hose and put something in here like this, now we have access via a needle. So you can see our needle inside there. It's not a long one. So let's say we wanted to purge this system. You know, I could put in here argon and bleed it off, or I could even do other things. Or sometimes you're transferring liquids. You would do it this way, and this is actually what we're going to be doing, using uh, some, something similar to this to transfer liquids. So by pressurizing this container and then allowing the stuff to come out into a different container and bleed that one off, then you can actually transfer stuff. So anyway, that's, that's a septa. Well, for all intensive purposes, I'm going to demonstrate possibly what a current setup could be. So here I'm just using this one as an extra gas port for a line that goes down to a syringe. Here I've got a long flask, reaction flask. Maybe I want to just do a, a, a storage in this one or something. I also put a valve here in case you wanted to take it apart here and keep it in an inert condition. Maybe you're going to put it in a glove box and open it there. There we just extended this one with a, uh, a condenser. Um, obviously you'd hook up water here if you were going to actually condense something. So let's say you were heating up this flask with this uh, heating element that needs to be jacked up a little bit and uh, you want to run cooling water through here which would be actually connected to this chiller here and um, then you could actually condense things as you were heating it let's say you wanted to add some argon or transfer something without opening this top valve um, you could do that let's say you wanted a thermocouple in here or a thermometer to actually see the temperature and uh, this one maybe you were just doing holding or something and Again, I put this in here in case I needed to transfer something, but yeah, that's, I mean, you know, a typical setup maybe that you could uh, 
use in this sort of atmosphere so yeah I didn't grease any of the fittings I just assembled it so you can kind of see what it may look like finished now let's talk about that thing right there all right so let's talk about this what is this this is actually a liquid nitrogen doer so this is a glass doer as you can see it's got a silver finish on the inside of it on the inside of the glass not on the inside of here it's got a protection sleeve on it this is so you can handle it or if you accidentally bump it with something it won't just shatter the glass and it's actually got a stainless steel base on it so here you can see this is probably the glass section here I don't think this is metal and then they've capped everything off with a really solid glue not quite sure if they just glued it on there that way or what but anyway this is what a uh, a liquid nitrogen doer looks like. So this, you can put liquid nitrogen in it and then you would stick it in here. As you can see it's a tight fit. And now you're actually cooling the trap. Now I would actually have to uh, make a bigger base plate here. This one's a bit small. But yeah. So now where do we get liquid nitrogen from? Well, we get it from this thing. This is a liquid nitrogen door. A really, really big one. I actually don't remember the size of this. 45 liters, maybe? So, this guy pops open. It's hard to get off. And it has a styrofoam plug in it, as you can see. So go up a little bit there. And then in here you have different uh, stainless steel holding chambers. So this one actually has holes in it, so the liquid nitrogen drains out. Some of them do not. So anyway, we would pour this, or in this case probably use something else to dip it out, and put it in the small doer, hook it up to the Schlenk line, and now everything that's being vacuumed out of this right here will actually condense inside of this and not allow it to go out. So any chemical vapors or anything like that. So yeah, that's about it, I guess. I guess it's time to turn this thing on and test it. Here is the current vacuum gauge, all connected, set up and ready to go. So I think what we're going to do right now is turn the vacuum pump on and open up the valve right there and just see if this thing holds a vacuum, see what we can get the vacuum down to. So let's set up for that. I have closed that valve and I think we're ready. Let's see what happens. Hopefully nothing explodes. Got my safety glasses on if it does. Looks like that's holding steady, so let's slowly crack open this guy. Make sure everything else is closed, everything else looks good. There we go. Now, I do not have this gauge calibrated, but it states 400 and it's going below 400 millitor. So that's a pretty good vac. So we'll let this sit for a few minutes and uh, see how low it goes, and then we'll shut this off and see if it holds. Well, we managed to get all the way down to 72 millitor. Now, this isn't calibrated, so I can't say it's going to be perfect, but basically, for a very quick test, because it's the end of the day, I'm going to close this valve. Alright. And you can see it jumped up, so that tells me we have a, a leak. So we will we will troubleshoot that. Everything on here might not be perfect, but that is a serious issue that we will figure out. 
So, anyway, we'll see how high it goes. Probably go all the way up pretty far. All right, well, I think that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed what I've done here, what I've constructed, and the things I've shown you. Anyway, that's all I got for you. Until we start using this thing, I probably won't post anything else about it. It's about done, and I think we're good. Do some checks, final things, start some actual real chemistry in here. All right, leave a comment. Bye.